But you, they owe me something. I haven't decided what yet. Okay, can you hear me? Let him know we're going to be That's what I'm going to do. So, um, Sarah just announced, I don't know if you could see her, but um, Sarah just announced that we're going to be starting a little late. Did she say how long late? We're going to be starting a little later because of the rain and people are just getting in. Um, so... Yeah, you might as well put her on.
This is your holiday. <laughs> I just want to name that this is Emmett's holiday. I think we all know. Fire, fire, fire. We get it. Good morning. At Land of the Sky United Church of Christ, we are people of God's extravagant welcome. Whether you are young or old, gay or straight, or somewhere in between, single or partnered, happy or sad, confused or inspired, street smart or college educated, whether you can't pay your bills or have more than enough to share, we honor you, your racial identity, your gender expression, your passions and your voice. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome in this place, at this time, to worship the God who meets us here, just as we are, no exceptions. And I also want to extend a warm welcome to everybody to come and have a wonderful barbecue picnic lunch afterwards. There's tons of food, there are vegetarian and vegan options, and I know last week I told you that I had put an order in for perfect weather, so I'm going to tell you that this weather is perfect because Rather than all of us just meandering around out on the grounds and not getting to talk to many people, we're all going to be together in our cozy fellowship hall and it'd be a perfect opportunity to make new friends. <laughs> oh, I love, um, I love folks who can spin positive. So, <laughs> um, all right, friends. So, uh, welcome on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, I want to call attention to a couple of different things. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you um, to our hospitality team that is making so much take place today, and our um, our worship arts team that also made this place look so beautiful. Um, there are so many ways um, that the gifts showed up today, and I am grateful. If you are visiting with us for the first time today, we um, love newcomers and we are grateful for your presence today. We would invite you to complete one of the clipboards that you can find underneath the chair in front of you or um, underneath your chair if you're in the front row. Uh, on that clipboard, you will also find an you will find an action card. That action card is where you can put some of your information if you're new, or you can put it here on the back of your bulletin. We put it in multiple places, so there's no, no reason to not find the place. Um, then, uh, if you are old or new, uh, those action cards are for all of us. They are to spur the church into action. So if there is a need that you have, I hope that you will put it down. And um, I also need to tell you that this week coming up, um, I will physically not be in the church space. Um, I will be working on emails and preparing myself for an ev even bigger uh, moment away. And that will start um, after worship next Sunday. So you might see. <laughs> my shoes. Um, I'm supposed to walk like 160 miles over two weeks in them, and so I'm just wearing them a lot. And I thought, nothing like a perfect weather day <laughs> to put on your 160 mile shoes. So um, that's why I'm on, and they're just also a reminder for me to remind you that I am going away. Um, so if you have a deep need, you gotta get it to me in the next week. Um, or you can wait until um, July 16th when I return. Uh, don't worry, I'm not leaving you um, alone. Uh, the Spirit and God will be here. Um, you all will be here, and Dr. Joanne Terrell will be coming from Chicago Theological Seminary. A friend and guest who was with us last summer, she will return. She is fantastic, and um, I love her. I know you will love her as much as I do. Many of you already do. All right, a couple of things in your bulletin. One is um, one of the requests from the Racial Justice Coalition um, in our community is that they receive 5,000 signatures for the Reparations Are Due Pledge. And what this does is serves as a catalyst for our local governments to um, continue the work that they have already committed to doing, which is actually paying out reparations um, to our um, African-American community. So I would invite you to pop online. There's even a little QR code here. You can put your signature there. You can pass it out to all your friends. You can send it to um, the people that you love, pass it on to your neighbors. 5,000 signatures is not a small number, but it's also quite doable. Like if all of you did it and got 50 people to sign it, then we'd be there. 
you're not responsible for the full 5,000. I'm pretty sure there's some other people doing this in town, but just think like that. On the back here, you will see the United Church of Christ strengthened the church offering. On Pentecost Sunday, this is an offering of the wider church that is collected. If you would like to give to this um, offering, you can read about it and you can also uh, click on that QR code to get you to a giving page or simply write um, on a memo uh, of your check. All right, friends, I would invite you to take a deep breath and to center yourself in this space as we prepare to meet the God of the Spirit who blows through like a gentle breeze and swirls chaos like a mighty wind. For her, we are deeply grateful. Let us worship in spirit and truth. A prayer for the pursuit of peace, a preface. In a report released this month, the Brown University Cost of War Project updated their ongoing assessment of lives lost and impacted in the endless wars that the U.S. has conducted since 9-11. 7,000 direct U.S. military deaths, 8,000 U.S. contractor deaths, also known as mercenaries. Other than those U.S. deaths, direct deaths in the countries we've invaded, 906,000 fellow human beings, including 387,000 civilians. One calculation says it all. For every single U.S. death that we will mourn this Memorial Day weekend, there have been 25 civilian deaths. And just a few other numbers, 38 million people have been displaced or made refugees. Total direct deaths and indirect deaths, 4.5 million. U.S. monetary cost, $8 trillion. Let us pray. God of the brokenhearted, today we pause to reflect on the thousands of our fellow humans who have died on behalf of our nation and because of our nation. 
We pray that their deaths are never forgotten, nor is the pain of their families. Today we celebrate in gratitude for the spirit that birthed the church, the spirit of peace that calls us to justice. We acknowledge that peace is the fruit of justice in all its forms and pray that we be wise, steadfast, and generous in the pursuit of genuine, just peace. We hope that someday we'll observe Memorial Day as just a memory of the time before we started living the peaceful existence you intended for us since the beginning of creation. Let us turn to you, Lord, in our grief and in our remembrance of all who are dead, regardless of nationality. Provoke us to take regular action toward a harmonious existence and so honor all who are dead by creating no more war dead. On this Memorial Day weekend, we pray for peace and for those who lost all. Lead us toward a world where no one must die in pursuit of freedom. May we be receptive to your guidance and may we never forget the pervasive and catastrophic costs of war and militarism. May it be so. And I'd like to invite everyone here and everyone you know to the annual Veterans for Peace of Western North Carolina wreath laying uh, observance tomorrow morning at 930 at the uh, Western North Carolina Veterans Memorial, which is on College Street near the courthouse. There'll be music, readings uh, consistent with many of the words I just said, and everyone is welcome. At this time, we invite you to rise in body and or spirit as you are able and join us in singing our opening song. You can find this in your New Century Hymnal on page 565 or on your online bulletin if you are worshiping at home on Zoom. God who's giving knows no end. <laughs> giving knows no ending from your rich and endless store nature's wonder jesus wisdom costly cross great shattered door gifted by you we turn to you offering up ourselves in praise thankful song shall rise forever gracious donor of our day skills and time are ours for serving that your will on earth be done all at peace in health and freedom grace is joined the church made one Direct our daily labor, lest we strive for self alone. Born with talents, make us servants fit to answer at your throne. Treasure to you have entrusted, gain through powers your grace conferred.
the night of anxious keeping, Lucy and I am to rest day. Then when years on earth are over and we've lived our human span, God fulfill beyond our dreaming all our stewardship began. I invite you to remain standing as you are able. If you are at home, um, we offer to you the peace of Christ. In fact, if you're here, look at those cameras, turn around, look at those cameras up there and say, the peace of Christ be with you. Excellent. Now your little Zoom room will close for you guys to be at peace with one another. And I offer to you the peace of Christ. I invite you to share that with others being cognizant of what their proximity desires might be based on their name tag or body language. The peace of Christ be with you. Hello, everybody. Peace of Christ with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Hi, uh, Yolanda, I have a question. Are you still planning to read the scripture today? Hello? Um, Yolanda, you're muted. Why is this speedy passing in the keys? Ryan got on those keys quick. I, yeah, they want us. They want us to get seated. I guess make up for lost time. I don't know. <laughs> Good to see you, everybody. Yolanda, we couldn't hear you when you were talking, but I'm not sure. Children of God, join us. That is you. I promise. We're gonna. In fact, I need your help. I really need your help. I can't do this on my own. Oh, okay. Well, good morning. Well, you guys sound like you did. Um, did you guys not get your Wheaties this morning? Unless you're gluten free, and then maybe you had Honey Nut Cheerios. Um, Okay, I'm gonna say good morning, and then you come back with a good morning, okay? Good morning. good morning! There we go, excellent. So today is a special day in the church. Does anybody know what today is? Oh, stop. It is Pentecost, yay! I sense your excitement, I'm excited too. The Pentecost is the story of the beginning of the church. We find it in the book of Acts. Um, people are gathered and the wind blows through and they have flames on their heads and they start speaking in all different languages. It's very, it's a, it's a lot. So part of what we learn about in um, uh, this moment of the church is that the spirit is poured out. And what we also know is that that spirit comes upon all of us that we might have many gifts to share. So I wanna talk, we've been waiting a long time for this day to talk about some gifts that were being shared for a long time, okay? So I don't know if you remember, at the very beginning of the year um, was Epiphany, and that is right after Jesus is born. It's um, when the, um, the wise people bring the presents to the baby Jesus, and that's called Epiphany, and now we're at Pentecost, and it takes a lot to get to Pentecost. You have to go through Lent, and then you have to go through Easter, and then you get to Pentecost. So we are at Pentecost now. Does anyone remember what, what gifts we have been collecting? Yes. Um, truth. Truth. Well, it is certainly true. What we, why we have been collecting this is certainly true. 
we had these um, little boxes and we were putting money in those boxes. Do we remember what that was raising money for? Perfect for doctors' bills. <laughs> so um, we love the ways that doctors help and the ways that nurses help and the ways that PAs help and the ways that therapists help. There are so many ways that people help us heal our mind and our body and soul. And it takes money often. And when it does, some people take on more money. Um, they, they take on more healing than the money they have. And they come, they come to have a debt. And here, God is really a God of healing. I don't think God would be like totally up and up on whatever's happening in our world where people can't get the healing they want. I have to be honest. But sometimes we got to work in the systems we're in. So we were working to raise some money. And I want you to tell, help me tell the people how much money we raised, okay? All right, so out in the sanctuary, underneath seats, not all of the seats, but some of them that have flames on them, there are, um, there's a little um, scroll. And if you wanna hop up and try to help find it, you might find an adult who's showing you it. They might hold it up if they have it. But look underneath your, if you're near a flame, you might look underneath. Oh, look at that. Mr. Scott has one in his hand. Miss Peggy has one. Oh, I think Mr. Barry has one. He's going to have one maybe. Oh, oh my Lord. I'm not meant to. I actually, oh, look, Barry has one. I got to stop sitting down. I feel like maybe, um, is there one this way? Oh, what about right here? How about here? Oh. Mm. oh, wait, Kelsey has one. Okay. Okay, okay. Excellent. Can you share one with someone? Oh, no, you keep them. Just hold on to them for a second. Okay. So um, you can open them up. And um, we will one by one. Oh. I'll put them up. So uh, who's got theirs open? You can even just slide it up. It looks like Reese almost has. What is, come here, Reese. Reese, come here. Okay, so do you see, what's that? What's that? A circle. Okay, do you see a circle up here? Right there, okay. So. That goes there. So it is a puzzle, and you have to help me put the pieces. Now be gentle with your pieces when you put it on. In fact, maybe I see an adult my, I see my heart. right nearby. Okay, well, I see my heart. Excellent. I see well, my heart. make sure you're gentle with the tape when you put it on. Because you you, well, you're gonna put it where there's a heart. Here, hold on. There's one. Ah, one or two. Uh, they'll turn them upside down. There's a number on them. So if they're upside down, people will probably figure it out. Wow, you guys are very helpful. Thank you for all of the help. Here, work on that. I'm going to work on this. Boom. Hold on one second, Clark. Give me a second. I think we're going to know. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. I have no idea what this is going to say. Mostly. Just kidding, it may not say, oh, okay, hold on, that's not gonna work. See, this is what happens when it gets too, we're going too fast. There you go. There you go. Okay. There we go. Let me put this right here. And now, do you see this, um, this shape anywhere? Okay, do you see yours? Yep, just pop it on there. How about, um, who's got a, a um, sun? Let me let me get this stuff. I know so who's got a son. Are we missing a son? All right, because we needed ten of these. Oh man, I cannot. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Six. I think we could be missing one. There's not one underneath everyone. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't raise that much money. We're missing a number though. 
That looks like $1,002.28. Hmm. That, well, but it's not. the. Um, it's supposed to be, but with those numbers, it's 1002 So we, if that, well, yay for us. Okay, apparently I'm going to have to go looking. <laughs> All right, friends, look under all the seats. And it's if you're on, it's going to be on one that has the, um, oh, maybe I put it here. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Here you go. Okay, let's go get that up there because that feels like a missing piece for sure. Okay. You guys, I hit it so good. What a good scavenger hunt. Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh, excellent. This looks better. This looks better. Hold on. Oh, here. Here you go. Pop that one. Make sure I have it. Yeah, put that one right there on the here. I'll get this guy. And you can just pop it on top of the um here, put that there. You can do it right on top of you can do it on top of here. Okay, don't. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, what is that? What is that number? That number is 10, say 10, 1,302 dollars and 28 sense. That is something to celebrate. Do you know how many doctor's bills that pays off? Over a million. A million dollars in medical bills will be paid off because of the gifts that we all brought together. The promise of Pentecost is that God pours out the spirit that we might work together to bring more of God's love and peace and justice to the world. Thank you to everyone who helped make this possible and for each one of you who helped tell the story because part of being God's people is that we tell the story of God's love. And love isn't about money, Love is about a lot of things, but sometimes money can be love. And this money is love. So thank you for being a part of this story. Will you take a deep breath and let it out? <coughs> Ooh, it's like the, maybe the smoke of the spirit from all the fire. <clears throat> Great and gracious God, we thank you so much for the gift of the spirit for the um, promises of Pentecost, that your truth and justice and peace are poured out upon, to the, upon the people, that we might be ignited for your love in the world. Help us to follow in the ways of Christ Jesus, that we might be your Pentecost spirit in the world. We pray this in his name. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. All right. We have some fantastic uh, child care workers out in the hallway who are, um, of course, bound by indoor behaviors today because it is a little rainy out. Um, and we will see everyone soon at a party after worship. Let us sing our kids out. When you leave this place, let your heart be light. Take God's love with you.
happening at your house? Well, at my house this Saturday, we're going to have a kids' summer kickoff for children and youth. Um, it's two to four this Saturday, rain date June 10th, which is the next week if it's pouring. And our house is at 2524 Riceville Road. Now, we're going to have nature scavenger hunt, face painting, snacks, games, bring children, grandchildren, children <laughs> or youth. Um, please park on Bittersweet Lane so that we can chalk draw on the driveway. It's the street right next to it. Bring lawn chairs and lawn games if you feel like you want to share. We're going to have fun. 2524 Riceville Road. Thanks for hosting. Woo! Well, this is just a check. Um, is Yolanda online? And she's going to read? Great. Uh, I would invite you to join with me in the unison prayer printed in your bulletin as we prepare to hear the reading of the scriptures. Will you pray with me? God of the Spirit, you arrive in a rush and you fill the house. You swirl chaos and break forth amazement. As we celebrate the birth of the church called to live Jesus' ways, let us not be silent in the midst of the many voices. When the loud voices proclaim a way unlike the Christ of peace, justice, and love, let us live loudly the story of the one we follow, that the failed stories created by empire values can be left behind. Filled with the power of the Spirit, may we know the gifts of the common good and live them out faithfully. It is in the name of the risen Christ we pray. Amen. Good morning and happy birthday. The reading this morning comes from uh, the Acts of the Apostles. And this is the prelude to the sacred scriptures. Whether we take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now for the meaning these words might hold for our lives on this day. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rushing, uh, sorry, like the rush of violent wind, and it will fill the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in another language as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to the Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed 
and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. The reading from the epistles, 1 Corinthians 12, 3b to 13. Therefore, I want to understand that no speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except for the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are a variety of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To no one, to one is given through the Spirit and the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one spirit and to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits and to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each and it, to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. Just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, enslaved or free, and we are made to drink of one spirit. May the spirit bless us with the wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Amen. Thank you, Yolanda. Will you pray with me? God of wind and fire, God poured out into the world through the Spirit, we ask that you would inspire us to be the church for these days. It is in the name of Jesus of Nazareth we pray. Amen. Each year I find myself on Pentecost smiling and seeking the words to appropriately capture this beautiful community. We spend the days of our lives seeking to follow in the way of the one who is the incarnation of divine hope. And in that discipleship, we seek to live in an incarnational faith. We can't promise perfection, but we can promise intention and desire to grow and learn and interface with the diverse truths that show up among us. The beginning of the church, it wasn't a quiet prayer meeting or a soup kitchen. Not that either of those things are absent from an understanding of the early church community. Instead, the beginnings of the church, they were deeply intentional in their disciplines and with care for one another. But here in this story of Acts, we find them in a challenging situation for all of them are gathered. And um, we've seen this before. This reality, it comes to bear in the earliest of biblical tradition. It's found in Genesis chapter 11, and it follows the story of Noah and earthly destruction. The Tower of Babel is a story of the united people who speak one language being dispersed into a diaspora. This scattering of the people, it was done because as united people, they grew their capacities to make so much happen, even coming close to the capacities of God. In that story, a narrative of a jealous God suggests that God destroys the possibilities that humans break forth by scattering them across the world with many languages. 
Now, there are a couple of possibilities. If you think back to a time when people began to find other tribes and failed to understand because of different languages and cultures, in attempting to understand this reality, the, towel of, the Tower of Babel, it is something um, like a mythology. It's like the story in the Garden of Eden, the Tower of Babel. It serves as an ideology to help God's people explain what they had experienced. It's descriptive. It's not prescriptive. It's not God's desire to wreak havoc on the world. Instead, it is the havoc on the world that the people are trying to understand. We find ourselves in that same place millennia later, where people across borders and boundaries can't necessarily understand one another. But alas, we outsmarted God with Google Translate. So be prepared. Destruction is on the way in that narrative. Another understanding, it would have us bearing witness to a changing God, arriving as spirit to make possible the church for this moment. After thousands of years where people lived without a capacity to engage, here in Pentecost, the spirit brings them together and makes possible their unity in the midst of their differences. In this consideration, it's hard to not think about how many folks who share the same language and even borders cannot understand the other and the unity in the church, which is hardly an accurate description. It's worth noting that this portion of the Christian liturgical calendar, it's actually deeply Jewish. And as professor of New Testament, Jeremy William reminds us, this story specifically, it is deeply Jewish. The Pentecost celebration, it brought the Jews together for the festival of weeks or Shavuot. The faithful Jews of every nation traveled to Jerusalem 50 days from the Passover to bring their first fruits of their harvest and to seek a blessing for the remainder of the harvest. It also served as a day that commemorated the Israelites receiving the Torah. As William notes, the fire, the clouds, the loud noises, we find it in the Hebrew Bible as God gives the Torah on Sinai, parallels the gathering today as fire and wind and this speaking in tongues becomes a shared language that encompasses this moment where the church is born. Christians should take care not to assume or read a supersessionist understanding of the church born out of the Jewish faith and serving as some kind of improvement. This is a fascinating truth that we bear witness to in the church today with the very things of Jesus spoke out about in the tradition from which he emerged are found in the church that bears his name. There are some amazing things that are documented in this moment. Um, Things that if they happen today, we might stop, we might drop, we might roll, we might call 911. But the amazement is in their meaning. The spirit shows up as wind and as fire. She's not simply a gentle breeze, but a source of warmth. And she brings together like people who, because of the spirit, begin to understand languages that aren't their own. What does this mean? While well, others suggested too much must have been uh, had to drink. The passage, it continues, if you continue to read on in the scripture, it returns to the prophet Joel and the prophesy that visions and dreams will be realized. The Pentecost celebration, it is about realized dreams and visions, but it is also about the future possibilities and hope. When we hear about the manifestation of the Spirit in the epistle to Corinth, we are told about the many gifts, much like the many gathered of different languages. When many are gathered, there will be a variety of gifts, all poured out by the same Spirit. And these gifts, they are poured out for the common good. There is no me and mine in the gospel. There is us in ours. There is medical debt that is ours too. There are people once divided, brought together. There are people who cannot understand each other, understanding. That is the story of the good news. On this Pentecost, I want to speak to you about gifts poured out because they are not small and they are not always known. So I first want to lift up a saint of the church today. There are many, um, but I'm going to just share about this specific one now. She doesn't work in isolation, but she does work in countless ways that are not fully known. Now, I know there's like 25 other out there, like, is she going to just about to talk to me? So listen, the 24 of you whose names I do not name, do not worry. I know you are amazing, too. 
One of the greatest challenges of the last three years has been keeping our kids connected. So our kids ministry team, it has been led by Virginia, not just for the last three years, but probably seven or eight is a lot. Sweet Emily Towns Rowland also served alongside her and has given selflessly for the last couple of years, and they all have taught um, Sunday school to our kids for a long time. Uh, these amazing women do not have children or grandchildren in our programming. Emily is a therapist and was ordained in the PCUSA Church. Virginia taught high school and she had a deep, deep, deep love of the United Church of Christ. Virginia asks questions that fill the holes she sees. She thinks through the many pieces and she sees what's missing. She calls and emails and texts and she offers her support. She has sat through countless childcare interviews and kids and youth ministry coordinator interviews. And when our staff may be in need of help, she is there to offer her gifts. If you don't know Virginia, she has a super dry sense of humor and she sends the funniest cards and I stand by that. You can try to outdo her because I love to laugh. Please do. Uh, she leads the Girl Scout troops that meet here at 15 Overbrook Place. In fact, um, the um, Moss girls are part of her troop as, our, um, as her grandchild. Uh, her love of the United Church of Christ, it's so deep that she, um, she volunteers for our conference and association meetings, which are not always that exciting. Um, we also drive the same car. Um, actually, I drive hers. She got hers first. Um, Virginia has named that she's ready to pass on the reins for the kids and youth ministry, and I can't help but take a moment to simply say thank you. Your service has been deeply supportive through some of the most difficult years and transitions, and I can't thank you enough. And I want you all to know that the common good made possible is not limited to the heart of Virginia. Someone will take her place. Someone will share their gifts. Things will change and things will remain, but the gifts of the Spirit, they are what make it possible. Last week, many of you gathered for our final Restore and Repair. This class had two intentions. It began with a series on restorative practices, a model of gathering and engaging that hoped to allow us mechanisms for coming together when hurt takes place. The wisdom for this came from years of challenging race work in which curiosity gets lost to hurt and shame. Restorative practices, it creates a mechanism for repair in the midst of the hurt. Many of us were present for the training, the leadership and trained individuals are part of the community that are prepared to offer to create spaces for repair. Here's the thing, I, I wish deeply I could promise you that this place won't ever hurt you. Many of us come from places that were deeply hurtful, and I pray that we don't engage in the behaviors that brought you here, but I do know that we will hurt one another. We are humans, and so that is possible and it is even likely, and so our hope was to create in our culture a way to name the hurt, to listen to one another, and to seek repair. In her book, Pastrick, Pastrix, Nadia Boltz Weber writes this about the church that she planted in Denver. This community, it will disappoint them. It's a matter of when, not if. We will let them down or I'll say something stupid and I'll hurt their feelings. I then invite them on this side of their inevitable disappointment to decide if they will stick around after it happens. If they choose to leave when we don't meet their expectations, they won't get to see how the grace of God, it can come in and it fills the holes left by our community's failure. And that's absolutely just too beautiful and too real to miss. Here is the things the spirit poured out to set the table for the challenges we anticipate. And it also poured out to provide the wisdom and love that will surrender $30,000 to the reparations stakeholder authority of Asheville. The RSAA provides key components of what we have garnered over the years in seeking to improve and work and understand how to best live out of the paradigm of repair. Central to the RSAA is that it is black led and black decisions makers, um, they will be who directs this money. Also central to the surrender of wealth is a complete distance 
from the knowledge of how it will be used. There is no consideration of the worthiness of a project or nonprofit. It is simply releasing earned wealth that accumulates regularly in the midst of whiteness in radically different ways than it does in communities of color. This work, it has been done over nearly 10 years with disappointment and anger and hurt, and it will continue to unfold. Our commitment is to hold a series in Lent each year before we make a decision about the yearly surrender of wealth that is a part of our budget. To Melissa and to Greg and to Catherine and Noel, I offer gratitude for the gifts poured out and the shared commitments that continue to weave us together for this work that is the work of our lifetime. It is the work of our community. It is the work of the spirit. Finally, I wanna offer a celebration of the future. Many know that we have a partner behind the gates of Central Prison in Raleigh. If you don't, Robbie Brewington lives on death row and he recently had arm surgery and he came down with pneumonia post-surgery. He needs our prayers, but he'd love a card. His information, you can find it in Breeze, just like you as a partner or friend, you're in that database and you can find Robbie. You just type in Robbie's name and up pops his address. Uh, it's just like he's here, but he's not here. He takes the church behind the gates at Central Prison. He shares the sermons. He offers God's love. He sometimes lets us know someone who's not getting shoes because their family isn't helping them out or someone who needs a care package for Christmas. He gets sermons along with a handful of women at Western Correctional Center for Women. The women know us because we lead worship there on the third Sunday of each month. Our prison ministry is um, under the leadership of Scott Thornton. I am deeply grateful for the work that he does to coordinate and make that possible. Many of the women have teenage kids that have been challenged in their relationships as one of the impacts of incarceration. In June, on the 24th, moms and their teens will meet here at 15 Overbrook Place, a building whose work is the common good. Hear that, this building, it is not for saving souls, though it might do that for our souls. It is not about bringing people to Jesus, though I hope you come closer to Jesus here. It is about living out the ways of Jesus through collective commitment to the common good. And Jesus isn't the only one who knew about a common good. These moms and teens at the retreat, they will have time to bond. They will have guided activities, photo ops, excellent food. This is done in conjunction with Circle of Mercy, our sister church. And I will tell you, I've rarely seen a more beautiful spreadsheet than the one that Becky Robinson created. <laughs> and I also told her people who do these things will get asked to do more. You can ask. Dave Minnick, who is um, heading up the insurance that there is a sloped sidewalk that allows for a accessible entrance into the education wing. I anticipate that happening in the coming months, maybe even while I'm gone. Woo, woo. So did anyone hear that our kids ministry team is ready for a transition in leadership? Just wanted to go back. Let's get back to the retreat. As beautiful as it is, her spreadsheet is actually missing some important information, and it's not because of Becky, because I assure you, it is full of really important information. Her information is missing many of your names. She needs you and your gifts in the mix. So, there's an insert right here. I didn't talk about it earlier just for this moment, but here it is. And there's so many ways that you can help. And one of the things I said to her when she sent me an email this week and said, I'm worried because we don't have enough people signed up. And I said, oh, this is, the, this is a common thing in our community. It's the, it's the syndrome of being late. It's, a, it's like we all have to be fashionably late to all the opportunities. Any which way, sometimes fashionably late to worship, sometimes fashionably late to signing up for the event we are supposed to be at in 15 minutes. It's okay. And it's helpful if when you're like, ah, the spirit's moving, you don't wait for the spirit to come again. You just, you take that first urge. You're like, yes, the spirit's just moved and I need to fill out that form and I need to leave it in that basket. Okay, all right. So I've named some names here, but please, no, I could name so many names, but then we would never get 
um, to a very large cake that everyone is required to take a very large piece from. The Pentecost truths, they are clear. And here's the thing, I celebrate those truths lived out in this community. Church, it is not a spectator sport. The common good, it is our collective work and it is the work of all of our hands and our hearts and the spirit that moves through us. The ways of Jesus will help us get there. So friends, let us be ignited by the fire of the spirit this Pentecost day and all days as we live into the call of the church. For it is not only the world that deeply needs it today, it is the church that needs it and needs to be reminded of it. Amen.
Thank you so much. Friends, now is the time in our service where we are deeply grateful for um, my prayer warriors, John Lundy and Mark Price. We were missing, missing a Matthew, but um, the Luke, uh, but that's okay. Anyway, um, I had two of the authors of the Gospels there, and um, we would pray oftentimes for the things that you lifted up in worship and for the other needs of the world. Um, Mark would often say, when I said, what should we pray for? He would just say, all the things, all the things. Um, we would hold that space together. Uh, there is a shift in how we're doing prayer, and you can find it in your e-news. You can sign up to be a participant in praying, taking a day of the week in which you will receive a reminder to our Padlet, which holds our prayer requests. And on the first Sundays of the month before worship, uh, we will meet in the justice room, um, the prayer team. And the prayer team is all the people who show up to pray and talk. So come be part of the prayer team. Next week, we're launching that right before I go. So if you want to spend some extra time with me, you can come. And if you don't, then you can wait until July 2nd, and then Dr. Terrell will be there, and you can spend extra time with her. But I look forward to us getting all that prayer time together. So let us pray now. We can experience that together, and then you can be like, wow, I want more of that. I want to come back next week um, for the prayer time. Of course you're going to come to worship. Will you pray with me? O oh God of the resurrection and of the Pentecost spirit, we beckon you this day to take up residence in our hearts, that you would continue to guide us to do your will in this world. Empower us with your truth that we can reflect on our yesterdays, make better choices today, and be a part of your coming realm in the days ahead. We know you hope for us great joys and celebrations, and so for all the happiness and joy in our lives, we give you thanks. For barbecues and festivals, for parades and marches, for birthdays and anniversaries, for uh, new hiking shoes for the Camino, for your great abundance known in so many ways, oh God, we give you thanks and praise. This Memorial Weekend, we bring hearts of sorrow for those whose lives have been lost in the trenches of war, our friends, our families, our neighbors, we give thanks for those who have thought that our lives may be lived free from fear and marked by peace. And we know that those who have not lost their lives, physical lives in the trenches of war have lost quite a lot. We recognize the wars fought in our communities. And so we lay down our weariness experienced in gun violence and sexism and racism and phobias that are targeted at the beloved queer community. We ask, O oh God, that you would help us to understand new paths to peace, that all the world would live with the knowledge of mercy and compassion and peace and justice. On this day, may our love of country not be an excuse for boundary making, but an invitation to freedom and fairness. And may we recommit ourselves to the ideals that bring about your realm where mercy and justice and peace are practiced by all. This day we bring to you the burdens that weigh heavy on the hearts of our community, those that are in the stillness of their hearts. We lift up to you care of the sick and the weary. We um, pray for Kay this day and for her continued journey. We pray for Yolanda as she heals from surgery. We pray for Desi who is on the way home from Cincinnati and um, had a successful surgery. We pray for the hungry and those without homes and the uninsured, and we give thanks that you have inspired us to pour forth love through the release of medical debt. We lift up the anxious and the uncertain and the scared and the lonely. We lift up the grieving and the lost. We lift up the sad and the exiled, the abused and the oppressed. O God of the Spirit who pours out love and grace, may the truth of that steadfast love provide comfort and peace to all of your children. Today, O oh God, we ask that you would breathe new life into us. Give life to all the places in which our living leaves us feeling parched. May the spirit descend on this place and its people, and may the fire ignite new possibilities and hope. You, O oh God, are the God of life, of new beginnings, of new possibilities. You pour out your gifts that we may better be the church for this day and time. May wisdom be our guide and may our lives be a witness to the life of Jesus of Nazareth this day and always. It is in the name of the Pentecost spirit we pray, amen. You guys heard it.
they want to sing this song and get over to the food. Heard. Okay. We invite you to rise in body and our spirit as you are able and join us in singing this song. This song can be found in your bulletin insert, Change This World. I hear your desire to leave quickly, but I will not rush through the song as I always get feedback when I play too quickly. <laughs> so, we will sing it normal tempo and we'll get through it as fast as we can. Really? One, two, three, one, two, three. If you are not, then hang out to the left and let the people through. So left is folks who are taking their time, like they're just, they're um, letting other folks who might have greater needs uh, move to the right. This didn't work last time because people were all mm, mm, jammed up at the door. So I'm telling you now because the sign is beyond the door, which is complicated. Okay, what do you do if you are, um, fully able-bodied and don't need any assistance, where do you go? To the left. Excellent! Yay! Okay, friends, go for it. You go to the? You go to the right. Excellent! Friends, as we go forth from this place, may you be filled with the spirit uh, that is justice, love, and compassion poured out. For the spirit of God arrives on Pentecost to remind us that the common good is our work together, for it was the way of Jesus and the call on his life. May it be ours. In Jesus' name, we gather and go. Amen.
All right, everybody. Thanks. Birthday. Have a great week. Thank Bye. you. Bye, wow, everybody. Ryan.